Hello, I'm Scott with Sean's Photography, and today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Today we're going to talk about the Chinese shoe patching machine. So here we have one in front of me. It's a very inexpensive sewing machine, and it's minimalistic as can be. Um, again, you can find them for anywhere around 80 bucks up to 100 and 200 and something odd dollars, depending on where you're going to buy it. Amazon, eBay, wherever. But if you're thinking about getting one, here's some maybe some helpful hints for you. Again, when you get it, you're going to have to do some fine tuning to it. It's not like a regular sewing machine that you buy at Walmart or anything like that. Um, you're going to have to adjust your tensions depending on what size your thread is. You're going to have to do some filing on it. Um, I was having my thread break all the time and I thought it was tension but it wasn't tension I thought it was that the uh, the shuttle was in the wrong setting and it wasn't uh, again it was uh, all due to a burrs on the inside where the needle drops down so I had to take a small file go up inside there get rid of that burr so then now my I don't have any issues with it but again it's a kind of finicky machine uh, the bobbin winder is a piece of crap on this so either you're going to hand wind it or you're going to buy um, a bobbin winder uh, that winds bobbins, just specifically winds bobbins. On a standard sewing machine, you have a dial. These have actually uh, twists, uh, nuts on here to adjust your tension. Again, it's kind of the same but not the same this one again is more finicky um, when you go to set up your um, your shuttle there are videos online on how to make sure that your shuttle is in the right spot so you want to make sure this is at 12 o'clock your handles at 12 o'clock your shuttle is facing again watch those videos again adjusting the tension on your uh, hook so here we have a hook and a bobbin now this one is set up for thin thread and the one that's inside here is set up for thick thread so that I'm running with 135 thread right now compared to the standard stuff that comes with it I'm running a 22 needle compared to the 20 needle that came with it um, I find the 20 needle to penetrate the leather a lot better and a lot easier and go over thicker seams. One thing that's different between this and a standard sewing machine is that a standard sewing machine has a sewing base um, platform so you can sew across it and you can take that off if you're doing sleeves and then you can put it back on. This one does not have that. Plus a standard sewing machine has feed dogs and does not have a walking foot. This only has a walking foot, but so basically this walking foot is the feed dogs and this bottom platform is the um, pressure foot, uh, basically, the smooth part of the pressure foot. Hopefully that makes sense. If I am sewing upholstery leather, this is recycled leather from uh, leather skirts, um, this is an apocalyptic bikini. It sews fine on my Viking 1970s Viking sewing machine just fine. Um, same way with this Indian outfit sewed on my Viking sewing machine just fine. But anything thicker, like two ounces and above, that's when you're going to need this machine here. So when you are sewing on this, now that you know that it doesn't have feed dogs, what happens is if you do not glue your vinyl or leather together or kind of adjust that seam to where it's bonded using DAP weld wood, temporary, temporary glue, or using um, adhesive tape, two-sided adhesive tape, you'll get this bunch up. Because again, the walking foot's going one way and the other's dragging across this surface here, therefore bunching up underneath. Another thing is, is, since this doesn't have the platform, 
it has a really short edge over on this side and your material is prone to falling off that edge and then so underneath it would fall off and the top would still be up there because of the walking foot and therefore ruin your stitch. So that's why I always recommend to use <clears throat> a temporary glue. So this is from the 99 cent store. It's called Tacky Glue. It's a craft glue and once it's bonded, it'll hold it to where you got your stitch done. And when you're done, you can actually wash it off. If you want a more permanent bond, you're going to use DAP weld wood, uh, barge cement, any kind of contact cement. Because when you go to burnish your edges, you want your edge to look like one uniformed edge and not two pieces of leather, but just one piece. And that um, contact cement will bond those two leathers together perfectly. So when I went to sew up this mask last night, I uh, used the temporary glue to uh, hold my seams together. So basically like this. And then I stitched it. And then when I separated it, since it was temporary glue, because when I wanted to do the French seam, I could do the French seam. And all I did was wash off the temporary glue. So I could do my French seam and on the outer outer seam around here, I used DAP weld wood, put my glue on there, let it set for five minutes, come back, folded it over, then stitched, and then again, there was no uh, pulls or anything like that because the two pieces are bonded together, so therefore it can't slide and separate from itself and give me this kind of crap. If you are having issues with it falling off, so the bottom of your um, seam falling off and it's going like this, cattywampus, I find that it's better to twist the walking foot at basically a 35 degrees and sew at an angle. And this, that way you get more surface area right here. So then it can't fall off the edge and then it stays together a lot easier compared to if it was going straight 90 this way. If this handle was in a different uh, area, then I would use the sewing machine this way and sew inwards, and that way I'd have a lot of surface area. But it's kind of a pain in the butt to stitch and hand stitch that way while you're cranking. So the 45 works, or 35 to 45 degree angle works great for me. Uh, you can not backstitch like you can on a regular sewing machine with this. You actually have to stitch, and when the needle's down and the foot is up, then you spin your material around and then stitch it back and then stitch it back this way, or you can turn your walking foot to walk the opposite direction and then turn it back this way to walk this direction, then back this way and then back forward again to do your back stitching, which I find it just easier to, once the walking foot is up, just spin the material, stitch it and then spin it back around, stitch it and finish off your stitching. Um, again, the base that comes with this is a piece of crap. Um, the first thing you're probably gonna throw away now I've seen a lot of videos online where they have a support underneath here. You really don't need that support as long as the base at the bottom is long enough. I don't recommend having that support underneath there because if you do decide to walk up this way, that support is going to block you. So I don't recommend having that support there, especially if you're doing a tube or a sleeve type of thing. You don't want that support in there because all you're going to do is you're going to have to start bunching up your material because of that support and make it more difficult for you than would it be if you didn't have it. Um, this base underneath here is basically just a couple two by fours and uh, one by one by sixes put together to make a little base. Um, it's got some little silicone or silicone or rubber pads underneath it to keep it from sliding around because when you start cranking that, the thing will start spinning on you, which becomes a pain in the ass. You don't want that. If you're permanently going to mount it, you can actually run some screws through your table or surface and you'll never have to worry about that. Um, 
Again, you want to make sure you oil all your points that needs to be oiled. Go over, if, you've, if you buy one, make sure you go over certain areas. Um, I've seen a lot of people have to file down this little plate. I didn't have to do that. It was actually nice and smooth. The little hole that the thread for the bobbin thread, that was big enough. I didn't have to file that one down like some of the other people had to in their videos. The only thing I had to file down was where the, uh, the needle inserted into the machine down here in the bottom. And again, that little burr, once I got rid of that, I had no issues. Um, again, it pretty much comes 95% uh, put together. All you have to do is put this little wheel thingy on, uh, hand crank wheel, and make sure that you set your bobbin uh, shuttle in the right position, and that's it. Again, this is the Chinese shoe patching machine. My name is Scott with Sean's Photography, and thank you for watching.